Hello, welcome to another QA Automan tutorial. In this video, I'm going to talk about a test and G listener, specifically the test listener adapter. Um, and what this will do is every time you run a test, um, it will listen before and after uh, when a test is executed. So let's say load page is going to run. Well, it will come to the listener, it will uh, check beforehand, test will run, and then check after to see what what happened, uh, whether the test was successful, was it failed, was it skipped, and then you can actually execute um, some methods, maybe logging, maybe send it to whatever like your test at an Excel sheet, whatever it is. Um, so um, to set this up, um, you want to create, I created a class called My Test Listener, and I extended the Test Listener Adapter. Um, and then this will give you access to all these different methods here. Uh, I'm using the on test success, on test failure, and on test skipped just to for this particular um, video. Uh, and then I created a listener test where it has one, two, and probably add a third one, which will be test three, which I'm going to say skip test to fail, and then test to success. Um, so <clears throat> one thing that you should note um, when doing this, uh, it also pulls in a test result. So whenever the test runs after the fact, um, it will have a bunch of data, um, whether it's the name, the parameters that you submitted, was it successful, what the fail was, um, uh, this you know the current status uh, or sorry status um, and this is really really useful especially the throwable uh, I use that often on test failure because I always want to know why did it fail um, <clears throat> so when I log I can actually say clearly why it failed um, even so uh, on a test failure you can do screenshots uh, something I haven't gone over yet but uh, maybe later down the line but screenshots are great. So when the test fails, have it instantly do a screenshot uh, just to see what happened. Why did the test fail? So let's write these tests. Um, so on the test success, it will be pretty simple. Um, I'm going to do just something where, you know, I'll just, I'm going to actually use asserts like I should. And I'm going to say it's true. Um, or sure, true, true, right? Every test should have an assert, right? <laughs> So uh, let's there. Why are you Why are you yelling? Being so difficult. There we go. And I like my tests to be clean, so demand static import. Um, and this one will be a special case, which I am going to throw new. Um, was it skip exception? I am skipping because I am told to. Yeah. Yeah, you are. So we have the test success, the fail. Why did it fail? I am asserting false. There we go. <clears throat> so these are my tests. This will for sure pass. This will sh for sure fail. And this will for sure skip. Um, other times something will skip. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do one. I'm going to go further. I'm actually going to make it skip. Um, and this is how I'm going to do it. Because this is going to fail, like we've talked about before, uh, depends on methods. It depends on test failed to pass. Right? So, so instead, I'm going to do this guy. So what will happen here, I think we've discussed this in a past video, the, when this test will fail, it will try to run this, but it won't be able to because it failed. So it will not run test 3 skip. So it will, in fact, skip this guy. So here, oh, so let's actually add our test listener to our listening test. So um, I'm going to copy the name. Uh, and you want to put at the top, there's two ways to do this. 
um, the easier way is at the top of your test, you put the annotation listeners, and the value has to be a class. So I'm going to put the class my test listener, um, which right here it showed the import the correct one. Um, if you really need to, you can put the com, you know, the whole entire uh, oops path here, but you know, cleaner code. And so now this test listener is, uh, or my test listener is now going to be listening on my listener test. Uh, so let's run, um, before we run this, we're going to put our uh, data, what happened. So on the test success, I want, I want it to say println, println. Uh, test result dot get name. Do I want name? I think it's name. Was successful. There we go. And then this guy was a failure. Fail failure. And on top of the failure, I am going to put. Um, throwable and I'm actually going to put the throwable so we know why did it fail so when we're doing our logging we'll actually know why it failed I'm just going to get the message <clears throat> and then the test skipped uh, this one will be just simple go here and was skipped so let's run our brand new test <clears throat> Uh, here we go, and run. Aha, so there we go. A success, a fail, a skip. Uh, what were the messages here? The, the whole test, um, here it is. Test success, one su was successful. Test two fail, was a failure. Why did it fail? I'm asserting false. We so expected true but found false and then test three skipped was in fact skipped um, and then this is the the uh, stack trace from when the test actually failed uh, towards the end <clears throat> so that's kind of a, a real quick insight of using the test listener and like I said you can do all kinds of things and fails and failures you can do screenshots um, you can um, write to Excel sheets. Um, same with uh, same with success. You can do, I want to write to the Excel sheet after it was succeeded. And then, or write to an XML doc and say, I want to run these tests. Um, so this is really powerful. Um, has a lot of tools uh, that you can start using. Um, so I think later down the line, um, I, I'm going to add more about the configurations uh, of a listener, but this should get you started. Uh, so until next time, guys, I'll see you online.